Now inside your consumable kits, uh, you'll find a smaller version, uh, and certainly much neater than what I've drawn here, a uh, picture of this template, which demonstrates uh, the proper strip dimensions for the jacket, Kevlar, buffer, and fiber. What this uh, depicts here, and there will be certain dimensional tolerances, tells you how long each part should be. For example, approximately 3 eighths of an inch of Kevlar, how many inches of fiber should be exposed after stripping back the buffer, how far back to strip the Kevlar. This is what the actual uh, strip will look like when it's done. You'll see the gray jacket stripped back so far. You'll have Kevlar, this yellow Kevlar right here, which is the strength member of the uh, assembly itself. This white PVC uh, coating, which coats over the glass, and that's this part right here. This glass is the actual fiber. When we speak of fiber, that's what we're actually talking about right there. Uh, it would be important to note that before you actually uh, go through the process of maybe mixing the epoxy uh, and having that sit on the side while you're uh, waiting to uh, get everything ready, you may want to actually take your jacket strip tool and strip back this, um, try it three or four times to get a feel and a little bit of practice uh, in stripping the jacket because it does take a little bit of feel, you want to get used to working with the tools. Uh, so I recommend that you try stripping this back three or four times before actually doing any work. We're ready to strip the jacket of our cable assembly and I've taken my jacket stripping tool and I've set the strip dimension uh, or the bite down as it were for the number four marking on this tool. Notice that it can be set for a variety of different marks and the marking we want for a three millimeter jacket, make sure it sits flat, is the number four mark on this tool setting. A point of, of note, don't mistake in it for the buffer stripper. Notice the bite down or strip dimension is completely different in the two tools. The one we want is the jacket stripper with the wider bite. Otherwise we may end up cutting right through the whole assembly and uh, wasting a piece of cable. The proper way to strip the jacket off is to lay the jacket on a mark. Notice that I've marked the jacket where I'm going to strip it with an indelible marker. Lay the tool inside the jaws, the V-groove jaws. Bite down properly, holding it firmly closed. Don't be afraid of going through all the way because you won't. So I've got a firm grip on this tool. Release the tool from the cable. Do not attempt to strip the jacket off with the tool, as you might be inclined to do from working with copper. Again, we're working with glass, and it's a little more delicate at this stage. The proper way to remove the jacket is to grab it between your thumb and forefinger in both cases, twist halfway around, and you'll notice it slides off nice and easily. It's very slippery under there with the Kevlar. Discard that into your trash bin, your fiber trash bin, and you'll expose your Kevlar, and you'll expose the white or whatever color it may be in, in your case, uh, PVC buffered glass fiber. The next step is to trim back the Kevlar strength member of the cable. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a shake. Notice how if I blow on it, I get all the Kevlar to come together. I can grab it all at one time. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a little bit of a loop because what I want, again, is about 3 eighths of an inch of Kevlar exposed. Okay. What I'm going to do is take my Kevlar scissors. I'm going to grab them up in there nice and tight and notice that they cut right through that material quite easily. Be careful, they are quite sharp. Be safety conscious with these. Take the leftover Kevlar, put them in the trash bin, and the Kevlar is now trimmed properly, neat and clean. Notice every piece of the uh, fiber is trimmed and ready uh, for the next step. The next step in this procedure is to strip away the protective buffer from the glass and this is done with the use of the buffer stripping tool, which has a preset hole for cutting through the plastic buffer, but not through the uh, glass itself. Make sure you use the proper strip tool for this stage. The proper use of the tool is to first take the cable, put a small loop around your finger. This tightly holds it within the jacket. Without such, you'll notice that it stretches in and out. So a small loop holds it nice and tight okay, within the Kevlar and the jacket area. Take your strip tool. You want a firm grip on the strip tool. 
Notice one thing here. If I clamp straight down on it, it begins to bend within there. Notice how it's bending off to the side. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold our wrist at a slight angle to keep the fiber straight. We're going to take very short strips. Watch. One. Two. Notice I'm, I'm moving in a slow, steady fashion. The fiber is straight. You notice that? It's not bent or cocked at an angle. That could crack the glass if I do that. And I pull in a slow, steady fashion. And I'm taking very small bites. The PVC buffer is adhered very tightly to the glass. Hence the term you'll hear out there in the field, tight buffer. If I take large bites, I could actually break the glass from the strength of the buffer holding onto it. This leaves, I leave approximately an inch and a quarter of length of buffered fiber, the exposed glass, and the Kevlar, and the jacket are all prepped now. The next stage is to take an alcohol wipe and wash the, al the fiber down with the alcohol to remove any leftover debris from the uh, glass itself. Now before we go to the next stage, uh, I want to reiterate one point, and that is the proper stripping motion when stripping the buffer off the glass. And that is, number one, keep the strip tool at a slight angle so that the buffer itself does not bend down and away and could possibly break during the motion of stripping, so the proper clamping direction is on a slight angle. Number two, you want to pull straight away and you do not want to flick your wrist. This will also cause the glass to break. You want to pull straight away and use your elbow as the uh, moving part of your arm. Again, do not use your wrist, do not flick your wrist at all. I've cleaned up all the debris and put that in my trash bin uh, from the stripping process. Now I'm ready to wash the fiber off. And it's important to realize that the fiber has debris on it left over from the stripping process. And although you can't see it, that debris is large enough that when we feed the connector onto the fiber, if any of that debris is left on the glass, it could clog the hole and the fiber will then break inside the connector, rendering the connector useless. So we want to take an alcohol wipe, a uh, wipe like this, which has been saturated with a good quality alcohol, what, not rubbing alcohol. You don't want to use a store-bought rubbing alcohol, which is 70% alcohol and 30% water. You want to use a good quality alcohol that's approximately 91 to 99% alcohol. Remember that the glass has a firmness to it. We talk about it being delicate, but it's actually pretty firm. Notice that I can grab it within my fingers, give it a nice firm hold without holding it too tight, and if I just wipe the glass gently a few times, I'll remove all the debris that might be left over from the stripping process.